So I wanted to wait to record my Horizon Forbidden West gameplay demo reactions because basically the internet sort of went crazy. And honestly, it's revealing a trend that I'm really, really starting to hate. Let me get into it. So before we get to my crazy person reactions, let's talk about the charity we're working towards. So basically, I initially started this for the month of June and the goal was $1,000. And look at that. We broke the goal in three days. So I expanded it to be $5,000. I figured, okay, wow, we did a thousand in three days. Let's see what we can do in a month. Thank you to everybody who has donated. Uh, St. Jude Children's Hospital, they're working to cure cancer and other rare diseases in children. So all month long, I'll be including a link where you can donate if you choose to donate to the cause. And a few of the goals include $10 will buy a toy for the waiting area, a $250 donation or $250 will give a family a meal card for a week worth of food in the cafeteria. Again, an awesome treat if, you, if you're in a hospital with your child. And $500 will actually give somebody a bone marrow transplant. Uh, thank you so much to everybody who's donated this far. Let's get back to the video for now. More on that at the end of the video. Okay, so Horizon Forbidden West has been revealing this, this consistent thing that I keep seeing every time there's a major game reveal. And actually it brought me back to Halo Infinite. There's these games that are being built up to be larger than life within the gaming community, Horizon being one of them, and I think Halo is definitely the other. With Halo, we got an extended gameplay demo that actually showed a lot of positive things about where the franchise is going, uh, like a lot of the community asks were addressed, but everybody latched onto what amounted to what five frames of a character's face who became the Craig meme. And well, yeah, it's it's funny. And some some of the jokes for Alloy, I guess you could consider funny also. But the more I see it, the more I, I'm not laughing as much. The idea that these gameplay demos can be boiled down to a few frames or a screenshot of a character's face where they look bad for a few moments is it's just a, a trend that I, I'm really, really not liking because it sort of detracts from the actual accomplishments of these gameplay demos. Uh, you think about what they were trying to showcase with Halo Infinite. Granted, yes, feedback should be sent and heard loud and clear for a game like Infinite that needed to be delayed, but Horizon otherwise looks absolutely astonishing. So speaking about Horizon specifically, there were a lot of comments about how Alloy looks. Um, uh, there was a picture going around about her like in all this makeup and honestly I found it incredibly creepy. I didn't <laughs> I didn't find it funny at all and a lot of people made fun of it for saying that people don't have makeup factories in the post-apocalyptic future with robot dinosaurs running around. Rightfully so, right? Um so here's here's the long and the short of it. It Alloy has aged since the first game. So Alloy is seven when the first game starts. By the end of the game, she's around 20. And there was a comment made about how the how it's now been a thousand years since the old ones fell. And in the original game set around the year 3040, it was 974 years. So that puts Alloy around 45 years old, if the math is correct. And I'm going off of like a fan Wikipedia for, for the mention and for the, the uh, age guesses here. So honestly, if she's 45, Here's a picture of me when I was around her age, a 20 year old. And here's a picture of me now. But the point is people age, right? And if Alloy looks that good at 45, then I, I'm really, really surprised by the reaction. I, I think it's honestly just narrative driven. So a lot of people have shown the original character, uh, original person that the character was modeled off of. And they're doing that side by side. But also like, it's just such a weird reaction for me like that's what you latched onto you don't latch on to how good the game looks or any of that other stuff and then we also talked about the delay for god of war the other day and the reaction to that and how people were talking about how these games are being held back well surprise surprise literally one day later there's all these interviews about horizon Forbidden West and how they said they are testing a ton on the PS4 this is to make sure 
that they avoid a cyberpunk situation. They didn't say that. I'm saying that because everybody saw what happened with cyberpunk and they want to make sure that absolutely does not happen. Uh, the idea that the PS5 can do something. Oh, yeah, I wrote that. So one second. Uh, some of the features they're going to have are 3D audio, dual sense, a 60 FPS mode, unique rendering for the underwater scenes only on PS5, special cinematic lighting rig only on the PlayStation 5. And um, yeah, so like, for me, this idea that the the PlayStation 5, yes, Ratchet and Clank has a feature that absolutely harnesses the power of the PlayStation 5 and what it can do. And it looks it looks great. It looks wonderful, right? Uh, Returnal really really harnesses the power of the dual sense and uh, utilizes it in some really, really cool ways. And I really, really enjoy that. But the idea that the PlayStation 5 is going to uh, magically open these new doors for all game developers is just the premise that I, I don't agree with. A lot of people have this idea like, well, just imagine what they could do if they could harness the power of the PlayStation 5. Guess what? I have a box sitting next to me that I'm recording this video on. It's a PC. And guess what? PCs are already light years ahead of where the consoles are at, right? The consoles are doing some interesting things with the hard drive this time around. And yes, they are very powerful boxes, but at the end of the day, the PC's got it beat in pure power alone. And that's not me being a PC elitist. That's just, if you have infinite money to throw at a PC, you can continue, you can build a, a very, very powerful computer, right? The consoles are largely locked to a, a life cycle. And therefore the longer the consoles exist, the, the less powerful they will be compared to PC hardware. Now, people will learn to stretch the power of those consoles as far as they can go. And yeah, I just it's just a really weird idea to me. People have built up this, this expectation that the PlayStation 5 is going to do all these insane things. And, and largely, I think we're, we're seeing them. Stuff like uh, ray tracing, which was on PC first, is now on consoles and people are blown away by that. Uh, 60 and 120 frames per second. I think we've only seen 120 on, on Xbox though. I can't think of a, a 120 PlayStation 5 game off the top of my head. Maybe Call of Duty did it, but I, I'd have to look into that a little bit more. But anyway, yeah, we're seeing higher frame rates on the con con consoles with a, a higher base resolution. A lot of those games target the base of uh, 1080 or 1440, and then they upscale up to 4K. But the technology used behind all of this stuff, it's it's been around for, for a long time on PC. So look, yeah, I get it. Like you want console exclusives and Jim Ryan, a lot of people are pointing out, they feel like lied to because of the whole generations quote, right? And I'm, I'm actually making another video just about that. So hopefully I can link to that. I'm not sure what order I'm going to postseason because I'm recording two tonight. But the idea that Jim Ryan lied, I think is being addressed by Herman Holst, who is kind of saying the exact opposite of everything Jim Ryan is saying. Because, well, okay, I'm, I'm going to save that for the other video. So check that out. But anyway, the, the point of this one is all about how Horizon Forbidden West is has really highlighted a problem that I'm seeing in the industry where Every little quote, every little turn of phrase that is being said by people is being blown out of proportion. I mean, the long and the short of it is PC is will forever be the most powerful platform that you're going to be playing on. It's the components of the PC are constantly being swapped out and improved and built. Like AMD just did this whole conference about how powerful their new CPUs are going to be, etc. So, um, yeah, I. Just manage, I guess I, I guess all I'm really trying to say is like sort of manage your expectations. I, I'm finding it less and less funny. Like when Elden Ring comes out, what's the frame that they're what's the five frames that they're gonna find to to be mad about? Right? Like, is this really what we're going to do? We're just going to find the most minuscule thing about every AAA trailer and just dunk on it. I mean, it definitely makes the developer nervous about ever showing anything early. So if you want developers to never show you anything early <laughs> or go back to a, a world where all of our trailers are just CG trailers and you never see actual gameplay, then yeah, sure, keep making your memes because <laughs> that's what's going to happen. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's definitely been a weird year. You know, we got Cyberpunk where that was just wrong how they 
they straight up made the PS the base consoles seem like they were going to run just fine. They absolutely did not. And then you have, you know, other companies sort of getting the backlash from that, I think, with um the PS4 and the PS PS5 argument, you know, happening all the time. Anyway, that's sort of my two cents on it. I don't like it. I don't particularly find it funny anymore. Uh, I, I sort of, I usually do in the moment, but then when you sit and sort of reflect on it for a little bit, you're kind of like, this is kind of messed up. So if, and that's why that developer said for Halo Infinite, like all of our expectations are up here. Maybe you should bring them right here so they can go up here. Like, let's just kind of get a baseline of what we should expect from games. Because if we're expecting them to fix all our problems and be be another uh, flag to stamp in the ground. Like you're just setting yourself up for eventual disappointment one way or the other. Anyway, that's my two cents, sort of a weird video to make, but uh, I don't know. I think people sort of like, people were sending me this stuff on Twitter. They're like, huh, look at, look at how bad this game looks. And I'm like, look, Horizon Forbidden West may not be for me. It may not be like my personal game. Uh, I still haven't finished the first one. I played it for a while. And not every game is going to resonate with me. That's just the honest truth, right? But dunking on a, a pre-release game that looks gorgeous because in a few scenes, Alway, a 45-year-old fictional video game character, looks a little weird. I just, I'm not on, I, it's really hard for me to get on board with that. Uh, yeah. So keep being critical. But, like, come on. Like, no game is ever going to be good now. Like this, this is what this is what game is going to be like from now on. We're going to see every every trailer during E3. Everyone's going to find the five frames that they don't like, and then that's going to be the meme, and we're all going to laugh about it. I'm just sort of fatigued by this this style of humor. I suppose. Call me humorless. Call me whatever you want. Uh, I want to. I I prefer to be excited about games regardless of what platform they're coming out on, and uh, look to the strengths of a product. Anyway, that's my two cents. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And just a reminder, we are raising money for St. Jude Children's Hospital all month long, St. Jude Children's Hospital. <clears throat> they work to cure cancer. They went from a 25% survival rate to an 80% survival rate. They, they cure cancer and other rare childhood diseases all month long. I'll be including this link where you can donate. And real quick, I got to Tiltify up over here. Yeah, so we smashed through that $1,000 goal. I've set a $5,000 goal and let's just keep going because the plan was to go all June. Uh, Honey Daddy donated $275. He says, bam, great cause. Now we need a video on why Lost Odyssey <laughs> was the best JRPG of Gen 7. Um, yeah, uh, some people ask me not to credit them, but uh, Dan says, I was in second grade when my mom first uh, lost to cancer. And I later lost both my father and mother-in-law to cancer. No child should have to go through what my parents went through. Fight the good fight. And, you know, there's just a lot of stories on the campaign right now. So if, it, if it, it's cause you want to donate towards, again, just to recap, some, some of the rewards I, I highlight are the $10 for a new toy for a kid to play with in the waiting area, uh, $250 for a family meal card so that families can, you know, eat in the cafeteria together. Well, they're dealing with this this very hard time. And $500 will get a bone marrow transplant. We've already done a lot of good. Thank you to everybody who's donated. I do plan to donate during uh, the campaign as we're running it throughout the month. So, yeah, just thank you to everybody, even the anonymous people who've donated. Uh, I I can't believe we hit the goal in three days. I, I kept the goal small because I, I didn't know what was going to happen. And... I'm very humbled by it. So thank you. Hey, if you like these sort of videos, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching this far. Uh, memberships are also turned on. Memberships are a thing YouTube offers to content creators. I turned it on and wow, a lot of backers. Thank you to everybody who has backed this far. I'm going to go for now. Thank you for watching and I'll see you for the next one. Bye for now, everybody.